To another transmission of the Life for All Institute, we are in the general theme, Christ, the connecting center of God's work, and we arrived at the message 24, the letter to, of Paul to Philemon, story of love. And the scripture reading is Philemon 1, verses 1 to 25. Unfortunately, in the transmission, there's no way that we can transmit also the joy of the saints here. For those who don't know, we are in Natal, Rio Grande do Norte, to a conference, for a conference, of the region 4 of the northeast of Brazil and the joy here is indescribable the joy of the saints the joy of the spirit because many here practice making the word dwelling richly in us and this has been producing in us a reality indescribable. We have been having experiences in the streets and there is no way, unfortunately, to transmit this joy of these images of the saints in, the, in this meeting. I'm going to read. We are in the northeast of Brazil and a sister made a text. And I, and I thought that this text was really precise, doing a summary of yesterday's message. The Word of God speaks, always has an objective, and to build up his house is the main reason. That's why he needs us to be proactive, to leave our four walls. That's why he is calling immersion in the Holy Word. It's an essential part of the plan. And so that we can leave to the streets always under his command. Today, God is fighting through his church. That's why he's conducting it to do what he wants. Children and teenagers are part of this fight. This new generation, the street as warriors are simple and have no shame. That's why they walk over the mounts. So, we do not believe that it's quick fire because God's speech does not fail. They are the holy army ready for the fight. At the front of the army, we have a general. The word is our sword to fight with him until the last breath. Where the Lord is present, wars are won. If the word is taken with faith, it saves lives. Its fragrance gives lives, gives, gives color even to suicidal people. The word is constructing a net of love 
that is growing with the saints immersion from teenagers and children that are resistant to adults that are still resisting we should immerse in the river your word come to us as rain and reaches us like a river and make, makes us fight each day so now it's time to wake up to throw our war chant to yell to yell to yell don't be silent yell shout so that we can expose satan be one that produce fruits to the lord he has been giving us everything and today he wants to see the result of his struggle of love in each age god uses a channel and for us we need to believe in what the prophet is saying remember god thinking is not your thinking his ways highways deliver us from struggle who do you think you are to question his intent also remember that we are stepping in the ground of the mighty one pray for the one who speaks pray what we experience today is something that is not was never seen before brazil europa and africa it was never seen before is the triumph precision of our lord jesus christ That's why God lifted up our children without concept, pure. Our children are praying for people, and our teenagers are entering this war with everything, doing immersion, transcriptions, ruminating. Taking this to the streets and to their schools, influencing their parents and other adults. May our young ones also don't resist. Looking at the teenagers as an example, let us catch fire as well and form an army. And now the adults don't be a problem. Let us open our hearts. Let us surrender ourselves to the Lord. Humiliate ourselves so that He can have a way in us. You want help of your church? You cannot change the profile of the meetings, the conventional way of the church life. Plan one weekend to go to GTC. Take the saints from your church and spend the weekend. We have here Sapi in Sapé that stopped being a depressive GTC. And now is a GTC of warriors with the spirits in the high places. It will change your life. If your church doesn't have conditions, speak to the, the saints in your church. Try 
to plan for a few co-porters. If you are here from Ceará, we have Expo Book, a team of co-porters go to your city with the Expo Book, and so the saints of the church can also enjoy the, preaching the gospel in the streets, and you will see how the supernatural will occur in your life. Let's do this. Let's enter this battle. Don't just stay watching. Let's change our head. May the Lord renew our mind. Going to the street, doing co-porting, even if you are not a co-porter, you can have this experience. This pressure of the streets take you to depend more on the Lord. And then you will see how the immersion of, in the Word makes a difference. Let us try this. I hope that from this conference, many private saints take home box of books to, to exp experiment going to the streets. Take a, a box of books, 120 kits of books, put on your couch next to your television. Maybe your wife will complain. And you can say, I'm going to take this off, but you're going to help me. We're going together to the streets. Let us go out together. This experience will change all church life. We need a little bit of pressure so that we can go out of our conventional ways so that each one of us can taste the supernatural in the streets. And let us work also in our teenagers. And you will say, we have a few teenagers. You know that the church in San Luis had only two teenagers. And they way, went out to the streets to call teenagers. And now it's, it's probably in 50, 60 teenagers in less than two months. Don't have any excuse. I also said, a famous person said, who listens forgets. Who sees, the one who sees, imitates. And the one who justifies, who, he who does not do, justifies. Oh, this is not for me. Now, the one who does, learns. If you never did, you don't have the right to criticize because you didn't experiment, didn't experience. Let us change the profile. Let us put fire in our teenagers and you will see that the meetings of the church Will not, will not be the same. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Paul, in the final part of the book of Colossians, I spoke yesterday. He spoke about persevering in prayer and to be in being vigilant, to pray for those who speak, because the Word of God is what makes all God's work. It, would, it is what gives direction to the church to advance as an army, as an order. And 
speaks about behaving with wisdom with people from outside. Every day we have contacts. We have contact with the people from from outside. You go to the supermarket, you go shopping, you have always contact with people from from outside. And also when you, you do go party, you pray for people. So you must know how to behave with people from outside. How can we behave with wisdom? By filling us with the Spirit and making the Word abide in us. That's why the immersion in the Word is a gift for, for us. It's not about learning techniques of relationships, but about filling us with the Spirit so that we won't live in the flesh, in our old man, but filled with the Spirit, filled with the Word of God, speaking to each other, and so that we can teach ourselves mutually. I have already said, in a, when I study at the University of Engineering, I was a good student, and many colleagues asked me to teach them. And I realized that when I taught others, I learned more. So let's learn how to talk among ourselves, because when we do this, we, we learn more. That's why Paul said this. This way, not only that, I learned to take notes, even if there's books to follow, I liked to buy a book, a notebook, every notebook comes with a margin on the left for you to write. Before writing, I also do a right margin, a margin on the right. So there's a right, so there's a right margin and a left margin. And I do the notes on the middle. After I make my notes, I go back to hearing again. We cannot trust only on hearing. We also need to take notes. And when we hear for the second time, we realize that you left a lot of things out. Oh, how, how did I realize this? So that we, and also when we, you go, are going to review this message, you start to making a summary on the other margin and you do a word, a bullet, so that you know what that paragraph is about. So then I'll, I'll go to listen again. And when in comes the inspiration, the revelation, and then I put on the other margin. God spoke to me, and I take a note on the on the, the other margin. This works. I give this a device to you. You know Brother André Dong. He has difficulty in writing. But even so, he, he does, he makes notes in his notebook. He takes notes. Sometimes he takes one, two, three days. But he 
perseveres, because when you take note, you gain double. So that's why you're going to have wisdom to deal with people from outside and going to preach the gospel. May I pray for you and you use the prophetic word that you immersed. Don't use your own way, natural way to do things. The saints that went to Tupac came back with the same testimony. The, the elders on the, the churches know how to deal with every aspect, but when they go to the streets, they go to the, their memory, I'm going to speak about what I know and give advice to marriage, for instance. But this this is this doesn't work. And then when they use the prophetic word, it works. So that's why you don't need to trust in your abilities. God wants to take us take us to the heavenly sphere. That's why we need to believe in the prophetic word. We are living in this earth with a purpose. With Anasimus, the final product of the ministry of Paul produces a net of love. The relationship of Paul with the churches Tychicus and with Onesimus, a slave that was useful to God. And at, at the end, verse 10, he says, Aristarchus, who suffered in place, in, in Paul's place. Aristarchus probably was beaten in Paul's place. And he was arrested with Paul in Rome. And also with Mark, who abandoned Paul and Barnabas in the first trip. He didn't take to the sufferings. And he went back to his mother, uh, Mary, in Jerusalem. Don't ever give up on a teenager, on a young one. Even if he failed... God can perfect everyone. Mark became very useful at the end, became a companion of Paul and wrote the gospel according to the, what Peter said. Jesus, who is called Justice, and also Epaphras, a bond servant of Christ was also with Christ, with also with Paul. And at the end, Luke, the beloved physician who take care of Paul's health. I didn't know if Luke was with Paul until the end, but Luke was with Paul at the end. And this shows that the Paul's ministry was not a ministry of doctrines, of 
merely knowledge, biblical knowledge, is a ministry that produces life, relationships of love, is a ministry that makes God's will, does God's will, and makes this fabric of love within the churches. That's why who speaks for God was very attacked. I'm going to make this very clear. I'm not saying that God has only one mouth, but this mouth is collective. God has one mouth, but it's collective. But this mouth starts with the channel. Do you remember uh, Revelations 1? Let us read. Verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. This group of servants, you realize here that God wants to give them revelation so that they can prophetize in the churches. So here there's a group, a collective mouth in Christ's body. So God wants to re to give this revelation to these prophets, but God gave this revelation first to John, only John. And John communicates this group of servants, and this group of servants transmit what John said. God does this so that there's only one channel, one only speech. Today, we have many prophets in the church. These prophets are the mouth of the body of Christ. But these many prophets don't speak their own words. They speak the word that God notified John. They transmit faithfully to the churches what they heard. It's not their own words. You're going to... Let's go to Second Timothy 2, verse 2. And the things that you have heard from me... So Paul was this channel. And the things that you have heard from me, among many witnesses, commit these faithful men, commit these, don't filter, don't add, don't change, don't say, oh, this is good and this is bad. You must learn to be faithful and transmit faithfully the word. So the Lord will see you as faithful to use you as a prophet of God. What is happening? And the things that you have heard from me, the prophetic word, Paul, spoke a prophetic word. Timothy heard the word. You have heard the word. What do you do? This. 
in the way that you heard, committees saints, we have a tendency of filtering to think I can judge what is good and what is not. Commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Those who listen, if he is a prophet, he or she is a prophet, he will transmit to those who are also faithful. You have to transmit to those who will be faithful and appreciate the prophetic word. And they will also be able to teach others. Let us break. In the church, there is many prophets that work as a mouth. But these many prophets follow only one speech. Romans 12, Paul makes, uh, talks about many, many gifts. If prophecy, this if prophecy is talking through God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's not talking for God in your own way. It's inspired by the Spirit as Paul did. He spoke according to the revelation that God gave us. He or she who speaks by God Only he speaks when the revelation comes. And what he speaks needs to happen. And we have in these final ages, we need the prophetic word. And we need to love this word. Because it's this word that will take us to the very end. Who is willing to see the Lord coming? I love the Lord, Lord's coming. It gives me motivation. My motivation is not glory of men. It's not to have any gain here on earth an interest here on earth. My interest, my motivation is when God comes, when Jesus comes, I have a, a crown of justice, a reward to reign with Christ for a thousand years. I hope that this is also your motivation. And this word is producing a product for God. This is what God wants. It's not just speech, theology, empty, but it's producing a reality. The church is being built up. A place for God to dwell in spirit is being made so that God can rest. And also a fabric of love. We are being united in love. I don't know how to express myself to you. We are taking away all empty spaces between us today. Between among, among ourselves, there's still a little distance. God needs to take all distance, all empty spaces for a fabric to be of good quality. The threads need to be really well adjusted, really compacted, really close to each other. Say to your neighbor, God wants me 
to be really close to you. God, I'm going to remind you that the natural friendship is not a guarantee. Only love, the love of God, will unite us with perfection. Let's use the God's love that comes through the word, the immersion, that comes through abiding richly in us, the word of Christ. So this is the 24th message. You saw that in the message 23, we ended Colossians. And now I jump to Philemon. You know that Philemon was wrote, written because of the letter to Colossians, to the Colossians. And because Paul mentioned Onesimus. He was obliged to write the letter to Philemon. Let us write, let us open our Bible in Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Apia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you in peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The letter to Philemon is practically And the final in the final chapter of Colossians, Paul says that Tychicus will arrive with the letter by in person. Tychicus was being sent to be the letter bearer with Onesimus. And Onesimus was well known by the people in Colossians. Onesimus was a slave that ran away that ran away from Philemon's house. Philemon was his master. So there was there was a need of Paul to give uh, orientations to Philemon because Philemon was upset. I'm going to I'm going to explain and you will understand. Onesimus was a slave that belonged to Philemon. He ran away from his master. I don't know if you know. At that time, this was the regime of that time. There's no, there was no schools with courses to, to make professionals. There wasn't. So you have a farm, of a field, and you need laborers. There's no way that you can go to a school to recruit. You needed to go to a slave market and buy slaves. And the slaves were bought as a work tool. And when you buy slaves, these slaves become your property. You own these slaves. There's also a certificate of ownership 
and you can do whatever you want with him. So one, so a slave, was not even considered people. It was merely a merchandise or a tool. You can chastise him. You can also, you can even kill him. That's, that was the regime at the time. And where did the slaves came from? Come from? From Paul's region. Differently from, Amer from the Americas. At that time, slaves came from the defeated people. When a kingdom invades another kingdom and conquer that kingdom, they take all the riches and all the people from that kingdom were taken to the victorious kingdom. And these people were made slaves. After Onesimus ran, after Onesimus ran away from Philemon, but before he ran away, he he stole from Philemon, or made something to Philemon, planning. He's run away. They, he ran away to, to Rome. To survive with money from Philemon. When Paul wrote that Onesimus was going to be with Tychicus to take this letter to Colossia, to, to the Colossians, so there was a problem because the Colossians know, knew that Onesimus was a runaway slave. So you imagine, Colossians were going to question a slave that made prejudice to one of our to one of our saints, and you were making making him he return with honor. Colossians 4, verse 9. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will make known to you all things which are happening here. Paul called Onesimus a faithful and beloved brother. So there's a question in Col with the Col within the Colossians. Because Onesimus ran away, caused trouble, and you are bringing him back, calling him a faithful and beloved brother. So that's why Paul wrote to Philemon to clarify this. After he ran away, Onesimus started to wander on the streets of Rome. And by divine providence, he encountered Paul, and Paul preached the gospel to him. This runaway slave converted. And he became someone very useful to Paul. 
he became a helper of Paul. So strong was his conversion. He became to serve Paul in his prison. Paul also wanted him to stay in Rome to serve him, but it was not fair Paul, for Paul to take Onesimus before Onesimus make things right with Philemon. He couldn't do this because Onesimus was a property of Philemon. You have to understand the time. At that, that time, this it's how it worked. Paul, Onesimus was very useful to Paul, but Paul needed to send him back to resolve everything. And then Onesimus could come back to serve Paul. And you can see the humanity in all of this. The motive, the motivation of the letter to Philemon is to explain the situation and has the, the goal so that Philemon could receive Onesimus, not, more, not as a slave anymore, but as a brother. For Philemon, it wasn't easy. At that, that, that time, the concept of slavery, suddenly a slave caused trouble, prejudice. Suddenly a slave who caused prejudice come back, comes back with honor. And suddenly it's received in the house of Philemon. And do a house meeting at his house. <laughs> what and the other the other slaves will be what is this? This one that caused prejudice came back on top on the top. This is not fair. For Philemon to receive him back. For Philemon to take this runaway slave again and not chastise him, not kill him, was already a big thing. So Paul had to write this letter pleading, almost pleading to Philemon, please, in my name, receive him as a brother. Paul was not preaching against slavery. Paul didn't enter the political situation of slavery, since we do not mess with politics. Inside every regime, we need to be fair, acting according to the Spirit and according to the Word. Paul was not preaching at the abolition of slavery, which was legal at the time. But he was manifesting compassion that is in the humanity of Christ, in the splendor of Christ. We need to manifest this compassion within us towards the people with different social status than ours. We will not look differently at them because just because they are from another social position. Otherwise, the church will be separated by social status. We are brothers.
Colossians 3.11 where there is neither Greek in the new man there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian, Scythian slave nor free in the new man there is no separation there's no distinction, but Christ is all in all. That's why yesterday I spoke again that the God's intention is to fill us with fill his body with Christ itself. Christ will fill us until Christ is all in all. He will fill us with what through the word that's why immersion in the word makes every sense so in the letter paul also mentions that if onesimus caused any prejudice to philemon Paul would, will take the prejudice as a guarantee. It's a beautiful love story that proves that when we receive the river of life, we, not, we don't receive merely doctrine, we need knowledge. We receive Christ as grace, as reality, with all attributes, divine attributes. We receive God's essence, God is light, God is love. We receive the Spirit itself, so that we can fill ourselves with Christ, so that Christ can dwell in our hearts, that the Word of Christ dwell richly in us so we receive the gospel of the unreachable riches of christ this is ephesians 3 8 we receive christ to dwell in our hearts taking over control of our soul and making us dwell in god's love we received these riches, unreachable riches of Christ. We received Christ through the Word, through the immersion of the, in the Word. We make so that Christ has control over our mind, will, and emotion, so that can Christ be the head of everything. But first, he needs to be the head of the church. That's why if my life is not already governed by Christ, and I have the liberty to do what I want, I'm still far away. I want that the Christ will dwell in me, so that the Word can dwell in me, so that I won't, be, I won't have the freedom to think in my way not to take decisions, make decisions in my way, but to be completely governed by the Lord. Only then will we will be able to understand what the width, the length, the height is of the, the love of Christ. To understand with all the saints what is mentioned, what this, what this dimension is. And only like this we will be filled and fill every empty spaces, every empty space. The distance between you and another saint is an empty space, and Christ will fill until there's no distance between us. Let us be filled, and we will be the fulfillment of God 
In this way, the church will be edified, build up. Let us read Ephesians 4. Verse 12 speaks about us having only one work of ministry. Although we are many members, we have different gifts, we have different ministries of hand, feet, head, mouth. Each one of us have our ministries, our gifts. And these ministries are not by themselves. All these ministries are for only one ministry. In this ministry is the ministry of the body. And what is the ministry of the body? To build up himself. To build up itself. And how will we do this? Chapter 4. Fifteen, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Following the reality, the truth, we are full of empty spaces, of vanity. When Satan disconnected us from God, he filled us with vanity. But now we are going to follow the truth, so that we are not a Christian, only on the exterior. The church cannot be only full of theories, so let us follow the reality in love. To follow the truth in love may grow up in all things into Him, who is the Head, Christ. Because God wants us to be headed by Christ. And from the Head comes the Word. The Head sends so that a channel speaks to us and what we do we immerse in the word and we make the word abide richly in us abiding christ in us in our hearts speaking among ourselves be filled filling ourselves with the spirit we come back always to the same point it's the verse 16 from whom the whole body all the whole body is me and you. We are members of the same body, joined and knit together, consolidated. These words it's to unite intensely to make only one piece like the threads vertical and horizontal threads but all of them knit together have you seen a machine of fabric making machine The threads, the even and odd threads separates, comes the shuttle, and the shuttle is Christ. Christ is the connecting point. 
the weft, the woof, and this horizontal threads invert each other. And so that this horizontal thread becomes knit together. So that's that it starts to be knit together. And Christ is doing that by His word. A good fabric, a good loom, first needs to have good quality threads. Two threads should be, be really well put together. It should be stretched out. So the, the threads need to be with really good quality and also thin. The more a thread is thin, is thin when, because when they are knit together, they leave out less empty spaces. And we need to fill all these empty spaces. So the threads need to be really well put together. The more we are falling in love, the, falling the truth in love and growing in Christ, the more we are adjusted and consolidated, compacted, serving together. It's amazing. These leaders went, some of them went to Pak. The week that they went, they were living together, suffering together in the streets. Some went to the uh, a street called Oscar Freire. It's a street of a very high-end stores, and people barely look at you. And all of them went through the same sufferings, but they had amazing experiences, supernatural experiences, extraordinary. But the best are not these experiences. The best is when all these days, when these days was over, between them, love grow, grew. Without you realizing, when you practice the word, emerging together, going to the streets together, love grows. If you want to grow in your church life, we need to leave the conventional way of the old days. Before we could live our life, and when the meeting, the time of the meeting came, we were spiritual. Amen. Let's speak about the word. But when we went back to our houses, we are the same men again. The time the the Lord had to be to put us together was only in the meeting. The rest of the time, God didn't wasn't able to work in us because the word wasn't abiding in us richly. We were not growing in Christ. The loom was not working. There was no compacting the threads. But now, thank to God, with emerging in the word, preaching the gospel together. Husband and wife, making the, the word, abiding them richly. Not only we are put together in the time of the meeting, but also in our day-to-day, -day, in our marriage. Parents and children. The teenage son asks the parent, we didn't do immersion today, you didn't pray for that people. We are being, we are making this fabric every day in our lives. 
the Lord will be able to come back quickly. Otherwise, you live a religious life and you can fool the saints from the exterior. I'm not demanded to, to live in the Spirit because there's no pressure. But today, it's different. We are accelerating the steps. The reality, the spiritual reality, is growing in us fastly. Love is growing in us. The, who realized that love grew in you in these last few days? Look to those who you serve together. Is the love growing? That's what God's doing. Because the goal of the word, Colossians 2, verse 2, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love. This word, knit together, is the same word to, uh, is to be knit together, consolidated together. God wants us to unite ourselves, to connect strongly, is to be united intensely. It means to be united in an intense way. More than normal. That's why God's doing this work in us. We are being united more day by day. And the only thing that is capable of uniting us is love. Because it unites us with perfection. Why? That's in Colossians 3 verse... 14. But above all the things put on love, which is the bond of perfection. The version that I like of the, the translation is the Jewish complete Bible. It speaks about love is the only thing. Love is the only thing that bonds us with perfection. This shuttle that is going back and forth. It's what is it? It's love, Christ is love going back and forth because it's the only thing capable of uniting us with perfection. It leaves out all the rage in. It is uniting us day by day more. I read the first verses of Philemon. Philemon. At the letter, He was addressing Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, and also to the sister Afia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Because this letter is a personal letter, it's not a letter to the, a church, it's a personal letter to Philemon. So we deduct, we don't have certainty that. So, we detect that Afia was the wife of Philemon and Archippus was his son because this letter was a personal letter. And it certainly indicates that the church in, in Colossus was meeting in their house. So Philemon could have a leadership on the absence of Epaphras because Epaphras was with Paul in prison. 
in Rome. So, in the absence of the leadership of Epaphras, possibly Archippus was being faithful in this leadership. Paul makes known love and faith of Philemon to, to Lord and to the saints. In verse 4, I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. This is one of the only greet, greetings that Paul speaks about love before grace, before faith. that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. The faith gives access to all the blessings of heavenly blessings. When by faith you have access to all blessings, every sort of blessing, you receive a flow of the river of grace. And when this river flows to you, what do you receive? Love. You receive Christ Himself. It's God's love. Christ is God's love. So then you will know the love of Christ that exceeds all knowledge. You will be filled with Christ until the fullness of God. It can seem like doctrine, but it's, all, but it's not. It's reality. The love of Philemon has been giving Paul great joy. Verse 6, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Paul exalts Philemon's love towards the saints. Verse 8, therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting, yet for love's sakes, I rather appeal to you. Being such as a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I could use my authority to order you to take Onesimus back. But I prefer to ask you in the name of love. So Paul makes this appeal in the position of an aged man. So he humiliates himself so that Philemon would, would attend his asking, his appeal. I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains. Paul, through the gospel, took care of Onesimus as a, ch as a child, as a son. This proves that what happens when someone full of love preaches the gospel and take care of one through love and a fabric of love 
is knit together between Paul, Onesimus and God. This occurred when Paul was in chains, which intensified even more the feelings involved. Can you imagine Paul has no have no family and Onesimus have no family? But suddenly has Paul as a spiritual father and Paul takes care of him as a as a son. This intensifies a lot emotions the the fabric is made more intense. Paul gave the word and this word was what was putting was knitting together Paul, God and Onesimus. So verse 11 Who was was unprofitable to you but now is profitable to you and to me. The name of Onesimus means useful. Paul made a play with the words. Who else was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. The certainty that Paul had that Onesimus going back to Philemon was going to be profitable to him. And I am sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is, my own heart. They were sending back a slave that gave prejudice to his master. Now this slave became a beloved brother and he was sending him back and, and he this was tearing Paul's heart because Paul really loved this runaway slave. We realize the intensity and the truth of love that was generated in this spiritual relationship. And this must happen in our church life. It doesn't matter our relationship, what if we failed in the past, if we caused deception in the, in the, in the church. We can generate this relationship of love. But this is only generated following the truth in life and growing with the one that was the head, Christ. That's why immersion is important, to be immersed in the Word. Verse 13, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. I wanted him to stay with me so that he can serve me in your place. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing, that your good deed might not be by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. So Paul wanted that Onesimus to serve him as a response as of the re relationship of love. This painting only happens in the church. At the concept of the time, Onesimus was a slave of Philemon, so he was a property of his master. Paul respected his right to property. I cannot take your car and say, oh, this car is being very useful to me and I'm going to take it. 
You cannot do this. At that time, it was like this. Onesimus was a property of Philemon. So Paul was giving back to Philemon. Verse 15, for perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose, that you might receive him forever. I believe that you will be with him forever. Even Paul wanted to be with Onesimus, he thought better for him to be with Philemon forever. Verse 16, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in flesh and in the Lord. So you may not treat him as a slave. If then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. What a letter. What a letter. He did all of this for a slave. I never, I've never seen Paul write with so intensity, with much intensity. But this is because of the relationship of love that was generated between them. All of this shows this fabric of love that God is making happen between us. God is uniting us. Not only in flesh, but also in the Lord. It's easy to say in the Lord. I love in the Lord, but in the flesh I cannot love Him. But here Paul asks, in the flesh and also in the Lord. Verse 17, if then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. But if he has wronged you or owes anything, put that on my account. Would you do this? I do not know how much debt there is, but put in my account. So, he says, I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay. He wrote with his own fist, with his own hand. I will repay. As a guarantee. Not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. This brother owned his life for Paul because Paul preached the gospel to him. So he owned his life to Paul. But Paul was not demanding this debt, charging his debt. Paul was saying, oh, he, if he owes you anything, I will repay. Verse 20, yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Make me happy. Answer me, yes, that you will receive him well. Look to this insistence of the apostle because of one slave. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. But meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. 
It seems exaggerated. Paul to receive a slave is all is like receiving Paul, it seems exaggerated. But even this is the final result of what God is doing in the building up the church. The most special relationship that exists between us cannot be compared to the unity that God is doing between us. We are going to be united in a whole so strong that we are going to surpass by a lot the relationship that we have here now. So God is adjusting us and compacting us with each other to make this true fabric of love. And these bonds go even further than our natural bonds. I hope that you believe in, in this word. You can say, oh, today I don't believe. I, today I love my wife, my children. I doubt that this will surpass this, but it will surpass this. But you can be certain that what God is doing with us, this bond of love will be really, really, really strong. So Paul says with much in insistence that Philemon receive Epaphras. So it becomes visible the fabric of love that is built when we immerse in the Word, when we make the Word abide in us, and this reality is happening in us. The final readings of Paul Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. Epaphras, I've said is a helper, a companion of Paul that he generated in Ephesus when he was two years in the school of Tyrannus. He generated Epaphras. And Epaphras was arrested with Paul. And Mark was John Mark, who failed in the past, who became useful, and Aristarchus was in Ephesus, the crowd wanted to kill Paul, and Aristarchus was beaten up in the place in Paul's place, and Demas was a companion of Paul in the book of Colossians, but Demas in 2 Timothy shows that Demas abandoned Paul and was loving the world. Don't love the world because the, lo the world will pass, but the word of God will remain. Let us love the Word of God and immerse in the Word. And look, my fellow laborers. I wanted to read with you Second Timothy 4 to For, verse 11, only Luke is with me. Here, in 2 Timothy, Paul was arrested by Nero, the emperor. He was arrested in a miserable condition. He was seen as a criminal. And the friends with the criminal was will also be arrested and killed. And that's why probably all from Asia abandoned Paul. But Luke didn't abandon Paul. 
Luke take care of his health because he was a physician. But what I want to say here in the end is this. In 2 Timothy, all abandoned Paul from Asia. What a sadness. When I wrote this, when I was taking notes, I cried. It's not possible. A man so faithful to you, to the church, saints received so many benefits because he was dispensing faithfully and he suffered by saying the truth and being faithful. And at the end, everyone abandoned him. That's why I believe our heroic behavior, natural heroic behavior won't uh, make us together to the end. Do you remember Peter? When Peter said, when Jesus said, one of us will, one of you will betray me. And Peter said, even if all of them deny you, I will, I won't deny you. And Jesus said, this very night, you will deny me three times. When you have a danger, when your life is in danger, when they asked Peter, Peter denied. And he, when that, at the real moment, the survival instinct speaks louder and you deny. And when Paul was arrested by Nero, it was risky for everyone to be friends with Paul. But Onesiphorus didn't abandon Paul. Timothy didn't abandon Paul. And Luke didn't abandon Paul. Onesiphorus, he went to Rome to seek for Paul. And he looked for Paul until he found Paul. He didn't. He wasn't concerned of his own life. That's why I said in Manaus. I don't trust when a, a um, companion says to me, "I am one with you until the end." But I trust in the vision of the body. If the saint has the vision of the body, this vision will hold us together. I don't know if you understand what I said. You ruminate after this. Let us see the reality of the body. It's still happening. It's already happening between us. This reality holds us together, we will be inseparable, not for heroic behavior, but through the vision, through the reality of this fabric of love. This is solid, this is real, this is concrete. The love that was worked in us will arrive at a point that it, you cannot take it anymore. Amen.